Oh, hi there, fellow Unity UI extensions gatherers. Uh, here we're on the Unity UI extensions project and we're just going to do a quick, simple throw through on the horizontal and vertical scroll snaps. And on the whole, mostly the updates that are coming to the latest update, which is sort of, if you look at the package identifier, if you install it, it's version 1.2.0. Uh, there was actually a 0.2 extension now. I've not updated that. Oh well. So anyway, the horizontal and vertical scroll snaps. Here you can see them on a brand new scene. And I'm just going to bring it up brand new. So when you first run the control using the control, the version of it that comes with the solution, so as we help you build it, you'll get the scroll snap, some content, and a single page. If I run that, it's rather boring because there's only one page and not much else we can do with that now. You'll notice there that it doesn't matter what the size of the content is or the reach of the pages, they will simply scale to meet the size of the scroll snap control itself. That's the bounds of the page. So if you wanted this to fill the screen, as it were, I can go and sort of do that. And the control will then match that to fill the screen. And then you'll have pages. All looks nice and good. Uh, Obviously, there's a lot of options to do with these controls, and they are the same for both the vertical and the horizontal. You know, the only real difference between them is, as the name suggests, one is horizontal, one is vertical. Uh, you can set the starting screen. Obviously, if you've got the pages in your inspector here in the hierarchy, then it's basically it's based off what is there in the hierarchy. I'll come on to this option down here later, and it will validate to make sure you're you're not going beyond that range. Obviously, this is a zero indexed array. So page zero, zero, one here, this is actually page zero, and then one, two, three, four. So if I if I actually went back to this and tried to select five, because obviously I've got five items, then that's not gonna work. You know, it'll drop you back down to what the maximum is. In fact, let's collapse some of these panes to make it easier. You see, it still uses the scroll right underneath. We're just extending that and improving what it can do. We've also got this page step control here. Now, this is a calculation based upon the width of the item in the horizontal. Obviously, in the vertical, it's based upon the height. So if I do 1.5, that's going to be 1.5 times the size of this area, and that will be the gap between each of the pages. So I'm adding half a gap between pages or I can see, as you can see, there's the gap there. And I can increase it, decrease it, all set at runtime. Um, I've not got to work with design time yet because that always caused issues. Uh, there's a few other options here, which I'll go through in a minute. Uh, we've got transition speed, which will actually control how fast or slow the transition is between the two items when I'm running it. So if I'm here and I'm going like that, it's the speed at which I'm it's going to slow down and stop at, which is in working conjunction with the options here. Uh, we've also got a fast swipe and a swipe velocity threshold. This is basically so that uh, when it's slowing down, you know how how slow does it have to be going for it to then lock into a page. So if I swipe across and it's like there, it's going along. Once it dips below the speed, it will then lock into a page. So if I enable fast swipe then what this is going to allow me to do is that a swipe across the screen is simply going to go to the next page. Now, this speed, this threshold, is how fast do I have to swipe for that to actually happen? Okay, so if I go faster than it, then it's going to keep go keep going, as if I've, you know, I'm actually wanting to go through. But if I'm swiping quickly, then it'll simply go to the next page, and that's all it will do. So it's fast swipe enables swiping to the next page by just swiping on the screen. So it depends on how you want the control to set up. Now, if I put this back now, or in fact, I've just to delete this and add it on again, we can show off another nice little feature that's coming with this release. Add a few more pages. So there you go. I've got to pay, find my five pages again. It's still working as expected, but you can see, you know, it's just running over the items. In fact, let's add a few more in here. Let's add lots in here, go on. So when I run this, and if I look at the scene, I can see here I've got lots and lots of items. Now, obviously that can cause a bit of a performance strain. We've got so many active options. 
objects there all being drawn to the screen you know each of these pages is going to be a minimum of a quad so it's a lot of triangles you're throwing at it there which is not always ideal if you've got lots of items in the list so what we can do now is I can go and create an empty object here I'm going to call this my mask and I can go and add this to the child here now I could just here add in the rec mask 2d and then that's going to mask over what's in it obviously let's scale it up so we can actually see it there but the problem with using the mask is the fact that it's again an over calculation because it even though it's running I go back to the scene you know the objects are still there and it's having to calculate what not to draw when it's drawing it so what we need to do here is that then we can actually tell or scroll snap what the mask area is and while what now what this is going to do if I turn off the mask to make it a bit more visible when I'm running this it's actually going to deactivate or basically make inactive items outside of it so the contents there but these items the individual children they're now inactive they're not they're not being drawn they're not being active there's no updates nice and good and as I go and scroll across it's going to activate and deactivate as it goes now given that everyone wants these things to work differently uh, different ways they work there are still some options in here so in here we've actually got the mask buffer now this will control how many pages outside of the mask I should draw and this is actually the inverse of the page step where you're actually increasing how much you're doing this is it's decreasing the error I consider to be a control so I can draw more around it the lower the number the more controls I will draw so I look if I drop this to 0.8 and look at my scene there's not much difference there with the setup let's try that a bit small now let's do a bit smaller run that and then there you can see the see it's actually drawing more controls and that's either side so as I scroll across I now can't see things popping in and out and there's more items so adjust this to meet your requirements for how you're going to use it you know higher for less lower lower for more simple as uh, that was a quite well requested feature there so what else can we show now uh, quite a few people asked me about these other options so next and previous buttons you know they're probably the easiest things to add so let's just add a couple of buttons button one as we're horizontal oh come on as we're horizontal we'll put you there and a new UI button I'm going to put you over here I could name these next and previous but this is a demo so I'm, I'm being lazy and then I'm going to take button one which is the one on the right so that's my next um, button two I'm going to say that's my previous and obviously this is going to work as you would expect so clicking on next goes to the next page clicking back goes backwards fine but then we've also got this pagination now where this comes in very useful and I'm going to create a empty I'm going to add in the toggle group and to this I'm going to add a load of toggles or more specifically the same number of toggles that I'm actually adding as pages although I've not got that many in here so let's just add now in this you can either use the UI's toggle or you can use our extensions toggle that's in the project I'm just going to put a few pages in there uh, and now this is effectively my pagination object and let's see it's also for a layout group in this whoops <laughs> layout group uh, let's make a well, a horizontal layout so we'll go on we'll just put those there move me buttons I love doing in process demos just throw it over here you over there and now I've got this and this is there now, I've wanted to spend more time with this and you know I, I take away the text and just have the buttons I might even change the graphics around it but for argument's sake I'm just gonna have it here then my scroll snap I'm gonna put th this is my pagination and it just needs the number of controls that are gonna be across the entire control because obviously if you have, if you're showing a visual representation of your pages it needs to match how many pages you've got something to keep in mind although beware you know it won't break if you have more pages than you have 
items so it will still just work and now when it starts it's going to basically set the page number of you know which one I'm going and it will update and if I'm dragging this it's still going to update you know whichever page I'm running on jobs are good so that's the uh, horizontal scroll snap the vertical is exactly the same uh, but we also now in this latest release also have a couple of events and I'm going to simply drop on a simple empty game object I've got a nice little test script you don't get this in the extension it's just this one of my demo scripts I usually I use in my projects there and on my whole scr horizontal scroll snap I can add a couple of events so I've got the page change event so I can quickly expose this bind it up uh, you'll notice with the page change it also tells you the page it's changed to so I can use the dynamic change dynamic property sorry and then as I run this now and look in my console then as I change pages I'm going to get an event for the page I'm changing to now this will change for every single page it goes across so something to be aware of so if you've got a graphic or something on the screen and you're paging in between them then it's just going to work okay simple as and the selection start and change as you would expect that's going to fire off an event the second I start changing and the end change is basically then going to tell you as soon as it lands on a page and settles then it will give the event so it has changed the page and, get, and will give you again the ID of the pa page it's changed to so if I wanted to I could get rid of here add this event here bind it I'll go to this page change there we are again dynamic oops not wise don't do it in edit guys it's not a good and girls and there update page change I'm still running okay and basically when it stops moving that's when you're going to page now if you want it to move stop quicker faster then you know alter the deceleration in your scroll right mess around with these velocities and things like that to make it snap quicker uh, same with the transition speed if, the, if you have that lower it's just going to snap faster job done so that's the horizontal scroll snap the vertical scroll snap is exactly the same except vertical but we do have one extra little feature now so I'm going to create a new scene just to make this easier I can't do it in play mode file new scene don't save I've lost all my work so UI extensions and that too I'm going to use the vertical one this time just for fun and I'm actually going to delete my content because not only now in the latest updates can we have things in the hierarchies we had before I can now go and use prefabs and here's some I made earlier uh, it doesn't really matter what these are it's just whatever your objects are that want to be pages of so it's page it's, it's a vertical and an image whoops go to here lock my view because obviously you didn't know this now you can select multiple items and I can simply drag them to my array now it doesn't care what these are they just have to be game objects or prefabs and they're in and there's my now size array I can still set my starting screen based upon how many items I've got in this list again if I try to set five more than I've got it's not going to work it's going to scale it down to what it is let's put this on page one and now because I've got the elements as prefabs when I run this it's then they're going to work exactly the same except it's using prefabs now obviously these are all looking very different and how they want to work okay so that's the horizontal and vertical scroll snaps whether you're using it through items in the scene or whether you're doing items as prefabs and child objects you can of course uh, I've seen one implementation where they use multiple scenes and copying actual pages into the control at runtime always an interesting way to do it but I hope you are enjoying the control and uh, have fun <laughs>